Hello and welcome to another episode of Jackson Talks. Everybody with me, your host, Aaron Mashvitz, a.k.a. Jackson Stone. This is episode 113 of Jackson Talks, everybody. And we have a return guest, Peggy Green. Welcome back to the show. Thanks so much. I am excited to be here today. Amazing. You were last on this show on episode 88. We spoke about your first book which I have right here. Life After Child Loss, The Mother's Guide to uh, uh, Guide to Cope and Find Joy. And now you're back, episode 113, to discuss your most recent book, which we will get into. Um, but first, before that, I have a couple questions to ask you before we dive deep into your book. One being, it's been a while since I chatted. We chatted a little bit before we hit uh, record about some some life updates and things that are going on, some good things that are happening. Um, but really, I want to ask you um, how you're doing. Like, really, how are you doing? You know, I remember this question from the first time because you really want to see um, how people are really doing. And honestly, I am doing well. Life is good. Life is full. Um, and, you know, as we get into what we're talking about today, you know, I hope that that's that point of inspiration and that others can get here um, after experiencing um, loss. But yeah, I'm doing well. Life is good. Got this book. Um, I'm going to be a grandmother for the third time coming in the next four months. So, you know, life is just um, really good. I'm healthy and it's, it's good. It's really good. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. It's like, it's a, it's really powerful to come out of something, anything in our life that we may go through, whether uh, personal to our unique situation that causes us to feel some sort of grief or pain, and then come through it on the other side and, and uh, still know that, that that thing is always there with us. You know, we're just moving forward in our lives, but having this sense of joy and, you know, being able to be productive and live a full life even with that thing. And I think you talk a lot about that uh, in your new book. And I uh, believe in that wholeheartedly going through a similar situation um, with my sister. And so, yeah, I feel really aligned with, with your previous book, which we talked about and with your new book. And so, and checking out your new website, which is, um, which is really, really nice. Very well done. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I'm excited about the website, my book, because People who have gone through child loss, um, child loss by suicide, need some resources. And so I'm making these resources more readily available, easier to find. And so as the grief specialist, T-A-G-G-R-I-E-F specialist, um, making, making myself easier to find so that you can get these resources to help. You don't have to walk this journey alone. Was that a, a hard transition for you, being able, putting yourself out in a public space, talking about things that are very personal to you, um, and then kind of having to market these things to be able to reach more people? Is that a, is, is that hard for you? Because because some of those things can be a little contradictory, right? You have this like really personal thing that impacted your life deeply. You're working through it on a continual basis, but you're over time, you're learning some of these skills that are really helping you live this life that you want to live. And then now you're aiming to share it and then having to do a little bit of marketing for sharing those things so that more people become attracted to what you're doing. And it, it's just like, it's a really interesting dynamic. Is that, is that something that's been hard for you or what's that process been like? You know, that is a really good question. Um, so just a little bit of history on how I've come to writing two books is so um, my son um, died by suicide in 2018. And that was 27 years after I had a nine month old daughter pass away in a daycare accident. So after my son passed away, I posted on Facebook, my pain, my anguish. As, as a matter of fact, I just put it out there. It's like, hey, my son's died. You know, <laughs> here's the news. Um, and then following that, I just, I was posting my heartache and about the four month mark, along with that, I was also posting my heartache, but how I was moving forward and what I was doing and how I was seeing the light. And at that point, 
I had Facebook followers starting to share with me. It's like, hey, this is helping me. This is helping me. You should write a book. Hmm. And so I committed to posting on Facebook for one year and then like now what? And so, you know, the second or the first book did come out as a result of that. But in everything that I've done, and I believe this is what's made me so popular with people is because that vulnerability and saying, you know what, this is how my heart hurts, how it aches. Yes, it aches, but this is what I did to help myself. And that piece has just been huge and it's reflected in everything that I do. But then yes, when you say, <laughs> ask about to market myself and to be out there, I tell you, it, I had a flutter when my first book was published because I was like, oh gosh, not just my close friends that I've talked to and some of those on Facebook, but the world mm -hmm. now knows me from the inside. Mm -hmm. That was scary. Honestly, it was originally quite scary to think it's like <gasps> I've exposed myself, but that exposure makes me relatable. And my experiences is what helps others. So I get through that. But you also mentioned that I continue to go through this and this pain. And so, yes, I continue to have um, my books. And then I write a weekly Thursday Thoughts post. You can sign up for that on my website. And some of it's just inspirational what things are going. But then if I've had an experience, it's like, I ran across a tough moment, a tough activity that comes up still. And I think about that. I'm not perfect, that I'm still in the middle of it and I still live it. I will always live this. It will change, but just being human, I'll have something that triggers me, then puts me back to square one. Now, can I move from square one to my present much quicker? Of course I can, but I still experience those. And so I share that. And I continue to share that because that's that's life. Yeah. Well, I think what makes it special for you specifically or why it works for you, and I think it's similar as to why it works for me, is because we're posting in a way that's very authentic. Yes. And now I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and claim to be the most authentic person that's ever existed, right? That's just not, but I am saying that you and I both post in a way that makes it a bit easier because it's just coming from the openness of our heart. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't make it easier to say because it's still very real and raw and passionate, but it is exactly how we feel. When I post about you are loved or my sister or an event or something like that, it's not a, um, a marketing tool. It's like, this is what I feel. This is what it's happening. And this is how it may help if you are in a similar situation. I think exact, that's exactly how you were going about it by just putting your heart on Facebook and it leading down a stream of things because people resonate with that. They see you, they're like, oh, she's a real person. She's struggling too. She's figuring it out. She's working through it all, but she's sharing it. And that's so cool. Um, and then it leads to magical things, right? Your first book, like we said, um, okay. and also your second book. Um, tell me when, when your first book, just for people who uh, may not have listened to the first episode with us was episode 88. I encourage you to go check that out. But if you haven't, you're here now, here's where we're at. When did you release your first book, which was life after child loss? Life after child loss was released in 2020, um, right in the middle of the beginning of the pandemic, which I really found that to be quite interesting. Um, it was, believe me, Aaron, I have found a passion and a talent that I never knew I had. And I believe that's because of the authenticity of being the vulnerable and just saying this is it and, and how people can relate. And so, yeah, that was available then. Um, and it's definitely different in between this book. It um, covers you know, again, life after child loss, the mother survival guide to cope and find joy. And both of these books are tools and techniques that I must say I simultaneously use, but I've been able to break them out into two different um, books 
in just sharing some different things because you may initially the first book I talk about you know even something simple as what do you do and finding a memorial and I share the struggles that I experienced with my son or about their possessions their belongings what to do with them or encouraging you to find a tribe and find your um your spirituality whether that's with god or if that's your higher power so you know that giving you a framework on some of those things now mind you all this is it's i have to present it in a book in a linear process but this is not going to be linear for you and you may mm -hmm. look at one and say hey this works and then you may find another one that works in another place and this is what's worked for me take what you like leave the rest you know because there's so many ways to do this, but this is just what's worked for me. And I think that it's a good addition to anything that you're doing, or it's a good starting place. Whether you're new in the journey, you've been on it for a long time, or you're somewhere in between, it's always learning and growing because I know that that's what I do. I continually seek ways to make myself better, to help myself to get through life. And part of life, is a grief journey. Yeah, the uh, part of life is death, right? Everyone that you love will eventually die. And so if we can equip ourselves with some of these tools, I mean, you don't have to think about grief to the extent of what's in this book, because this is a very specific situation, suicide loss, very specific situation, especially losing a, a child to suicide or a sibling or someone close to you. Um, but we all are going to experience death in some form or fashion. So understanding some of these tools is also very relatable to like being proactive with your mental health. Like some of the tools are kind of intertwined, right? Where you're specifically relating them to a situation about grief and death and suicide loss. But if you pick up this book or you read your newsletter or you see some of the things that you talk about, it's just about kind of being proactive with our mental health. And like you said, taking the things that work with us and putting them in our toolbox and having those at our disposal whenever we may need them. And then if you run into grief, which you will in your lifetime because it's inevitable, now you've, you've kind of built up some of these tools that you might be able to use in certain situations and then you pick up a book specifically about your situation. And then it feels like things make a little bit more sense. Doesn't mean it's going to be easy by any means. It absolutely will not be. But all good things are hard and they take effort and they take practice and they take patience. And so now you're kind of really equipping yourself with some of these things. And I think that's like kind of the really cool idea about all of these things, about mental wellness, about grief and about having a coach and talking about these things and being proactive about how we feel in our brain, our mind, our body, and all of this stuff. Yeah. And you touched on a point, just the fact that what we use in our grief, we can apply to the rest of our lives. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that's because what I bring together and what I use is a result of a life worth of experiences from coming from the personal training realm, you know, wellness and nutrition, being a wellness coach. And then, you know, I've experienced the death of my parents and my sister, other family members by suicide. And then I bring that together with all the other things that I've done, even being involved in, um, you know, 12 step programs as a companion program. I've had family members in um, AA programs in, those programs as the companion help me to work through those difficulties or any of the personal development in my business that has brought together and said, oh, this is how I can relate to that. So now I know all these tools, which, is, which I brought together now can be pushed out and others can apply those in their life situations. Incredible. Yeah. I mean, a life a lifetime of a journey and experiences shared on a very honest and open playing field. So I appreciate you doing that for us. So your first book published in 2020, when did you start thinking about your next book? 
because it's released now. We're going to talk about it in a second um, or in depth about some of the things in there that are really, 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 really powerful. But what did you, when did you decide that you wanted to just get into another book? <laughs> uh, well, you know, when I was encouraged to write my first book, I have a friend who is an author in a different genre, but she said, you're going to write one and many more. And I laughed. I just absolutely laughed. I was like, no way. I'm not going to write another one. And the way this book started out actually was I had attended another grief program at a church and um, it's just where it was hosted. And, and I didn't, it didn't resonate me with me. Remember that thing about take what you like and leave the rest? Well, I didn't really resonate with any of it. So it was a learning experience. And I thought, wow, there needs to be some of these other resources available. And so I set myself last summer to putting together a program for the church. And through a variety of different things, um, the church, you know, I presented it to them and then they're like, it's not gonna work. I was like, wow, so that kind of dashed my heart. And I just set aside for a while. And then I decided, it's like, you know what? This is my book. And all I need to do is convert it into a book format. I mean, it took some work and stuff, but, um, yeah, and so I had a coach encourage me, a business coach. She's like, this needs to be a priority because of what you've got. You need to share this. This is different than your first one. You need to share this. So that happened this spring. Mm. So this spring, it's like, okay, let me start the journey. I started interviewing publishers and I came across one that I absolutely fell in love with it. And the way she works is she presents my manuscript to, you know, potential clients, their manuscript to three different editors to review, take a look at, evaluate my work. How much work is it going to take to get my manuscript into a publication form format? You know, do I need more coaching on writing? And it came back from one of those editors within 24 hours that she said she wanted to take on the project. Wow. And normally it's a two month wait because they're working on other projects. They're just lining things up. But this woman was immediately available. And when I started putting together the timeline, I said, can we get this out and have it available for September? which is National Suicide Awareness Month. And not only did we hit that, hit that, but we were published early. And so this has just been all things lining up together. Just absolutely amazing. And believe it or not, I have the idea of several more books. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not surprised by that. Yeah, because we're we're recording this episode on August 26th, 2022. It will drop September 13th. So if you're listening to this, it is September. The book is available. And like you said, September is um, National Suicide Prevention Month. So I encourage you to check out the book, check out all the resources that are available on suicide, right? Because we each individually play a role in preventing suicide, right? Understanding the signs things that we can say, what to say, the resources, where to go, how to talk to someone, how to ask about it. All of these things are wildly important and trying to gain as much knowledge on this very complicated topic and trying to destigmatize the word itself will allow for more conversation about this topic and whole, I wholeheartedly believe save more people's lives, which is really the point of it all. It's the point of the month it's to encourage conversation and help and resources and make this more widely available to talk about like you're doing with grief. So I just wanted to mention that. Yeah. That's why we're I'm doing gonna, this episode, you know, here. Yeah, I want to throw one in there as that resource. And this has just become amazing and, and it needs to get out there is so, you know, we have 911 for emergencies. Mm -hmm. We now have a three digit suicide hotline number and it's 988. I'm going to say that again, 988, that you can reach out to somebody if you have suicidal thoughts, if somebody around you has suicidal thoughts, and, and 
you know, it's it's a resource that they can help you. Exactly, exactly. And if you are listening to this episode because you're a, a fan or a follower of Peggy uh, and you're new to this podcast, episode 112, which is the episode right before this, I did a full episode on on Suicide Prevention Month where you can find resources. I talked at length about signs, symptoms, conversations, what to say. So I encourage you to check that out as well. <clears throat> so back into, into you, did you ever envision yourself as an author? Like, is that something you ever saw yourself as? And do you see yourself as an author now? Because you obviously are, but is that how you, is that how you frame yourself? Oh, uh, well, no. I mean, I, I never imagined myself um, as an author. I don't have any formal training as an author. I'm just like, you know, any formal training as a grief specialist, but life experiences and being vulnerable. So no, I never, never envisioned that. It's sometimes I question, um, after my first, first book was published, the, uh, my publisher who I work with there said, I'm an author and I will always be an author. I, that can't be taken away from me, mm -hmm. but it's surreal sometimes. And, and that, like I said, this gift of being able to be vulnerable and be authentic is, um, surreal that I just don't feel like it. And sometimes I'm like, I read through this and I'm like, wow, I wrote that. Because I also believe that there was another hand, my higher power, which is my God. And, you know, I felt like I was just the conduit in putting these words on the, on the keyboard. So it's, it's very surreal. I do have to pinch myself to say, yes, I've done this. And, but I know that it's moving forward and helping others to move forward. So I will continue to do this. I mean, it's, uh, it's amazing. Congratulations. But I think it, it goes to show that even later in your life, you can untap and discover uh, things that you never thought you could do, like writing a freaking book, you know, like, <laughs> I, um, one of my favorite podcasters is Rich Roll. He has a great podcast. And he's like one of the best ultra endurance athletes on the planet, but he didn't discover that until he was 47 years old. You know, um, you didn't discover that you were an amazing writer or had this ability to be this vulnerable and express your things that are on your mind and your heart in a way that resonate with people till later in your life. Now you're on book number two with multiple books ready to go. That's, um, that's a beautiful part, uh, of the human experience is that we just, if we just keep going and keep living and keep enjoying the things that are happening in our life and see what things pop up that we could undiscovered our untapped potential about a talent that we didn't even know existed. And then it could be something that we enjoy doing for the rest of our days. And that's really quite cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very interesting. Um, but I think it just really fits in to where I've been called. I mean, um, part of this is um, feeling that my son has encouraged me and wants me because wants me to help others because in this, it's a whole different story, but in how I feel that he, he wants me to be helping others because of the pain that he caused, unknowingly caused. I think, you know, when, when, when someone takes their life, they don't know the impact it's going to have on others. It's because they are in pain. It can be physical, it can be mental. There's a multitude of reasons why somebody chooses that suicide is the um, resolution to what they're going through. It's gonna solve their problems. They don't wanna end their life. They just wanna solve the problems. I wanna solve the pain that, and the anguish that they're going through. And I really think that my son wants me and I know that he's proud of me just like my other two living girls are proud of me for being able to do this I mean I think it to them it's surreal as well that their mom their mom has written two books and 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 grabbing the these two child losses and doing something out of it turning my pain into a purpose I know exactly what you mean you know I feel that same way about my sister, Rachel, who I feel is guiding me in such a beautiful way to 
to use her story and her power and her resilience and her struggle as a way to, to, to inspire and to maybe resonate with other people and yeah, she's guiding me um, every day. It's like a, this light that kind of beams inside of me. That's like, yes, this is it. She is proud. She is watching over you. She's always there. And that's really quite magical. And so, yeah, amazing. I'm, I'm also very proud of you because I, <laughs> I, I sit down to kind of write some of my newsletters every week. And I'm like, this is about the extent of my writing ability. And then I'm like looking at your 200 page book and your other 200 page book. And I'm like, oh, oh my God. Uh, so unbelievable. So speaking of that, your second book is called Survive Your Child's Suicide, How to Move Through Grief to Healing. Amazing. It's available right now on Amazon. And you can go to your website and there's a direct link to that. So tell me about, tell me about this book. Uh, I have a specific question about some of the things that are inside of it, but, but generally what, what would you like to say about the book? Um, yeah, thanks. So this is it. And so, you know, this cover just to really, it's, it's calming and, you know, this journey, it's a, it's a path and we know that it never ends, but that you're moving forward. And that was very exciting to me. And, and, um, everything that I've done with this book has been quite intentional and even with the back cover. And so with the back cover, I was gifted a pendant to wear. And this is the pendant. And this pendant, after my son passed away, it has like, it says mother and it has family and it's got our gemstones in it. That pendant goes everywhere with me when I'm traveling because I take pictures and then I scatter some of my son's ashes because he can still go with me on adventures. And that's just huge. So I know that his presence is with me. And then also um, there's a picture of myself and my two other girls. And this is taken, both of these pictures are taken at my son, one of my son's favorite places to hang out. It's in Daniels Park, Colorado. And that was, you know, he actually had a senior pictures taken there and it's where him and friends great memories it's gorgeous i grew up around it and then all three of us are wearing tie-dye t-shirts <laughs> because my son wore tie-dye he'd do tie-dye fridays so this is one of the things that we can remember and smile tie-dye fridays and even when he was in a professional situation and couldn't wear his tie-dye shirt to the outside he would wear it underneath his tie-dye yeah 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 and then even more fun and because and I'll tell you, after he initially died, I was so wrapped up in wanting to honor him. I'm like, oh, I'm going to start this foundation. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this all in his name. And so I built him into this idol. And I had to really knock myself and him off that because I had two other living girls. Um, but it did come up that, you know, as publishing this being self-publishing, this company is called Tie-Dye Press. Mm. And that's in his honor without being this overbearing thing that's just keeping me stuck in the back. It's still honoring my son. I needed a publishing name. So, wow, that was, you know, just, I love your word magical. But talking about the inside of the book, um, as I said, the first one was in a different way. But here I like to introduce something I call three phases to move through grief to healing. Yeah, I was and, very interested in this because I saw that on your website. I was going to ask you about it. So perfect. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so, again, um, this is what I've gone through. Many of us are familiar with the stages of grief with Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. Well, she actually developed that for cancer patients who were going in, through and experiencing it. And then the grief world caught this and started applying it. But we know as grievers, as mourners, those on the last journey, that grief is not linear. And she actually denounced this before she passed away. And the reason why I bring that up is because, again, I have to present things on paper. Um, 
and how you choose to go about taking these and processing them is up to you. So the three phases I go through is I talk about acceptance, then understanding your fear, and then recovery in physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health. And acceptance, especially when someone has died by suicide, by your child has died by suicide, it's really important to accept that this has happened. You as a parent or as a sibling, um, as a spouse, didn't have control over their decision. Accept that it's happened. Accept that you can move forward. You can give yourself permission to grieve. Accepting that, giving yourself permission to heal. And so really covering that into some deep detail. I also do spend a fair amount of time talking about suicide itself because I found when I first, after my son passed away, not having been through this personally before, I had so many questions. Why did this happen? How did this happen? You know, and so I cover that in the book and talk about some of the statistics. And I, for me, being able to understand that was really important in going through that acceptance piece, mm. understanding that's like, he didn't do this to hurt me, understanding that he did this because he was in some sort of pain. Mm -hmm. And so finding that I really felt was very helpful because then it, then it, it gives me the bigger umbrella to be able to move forward. And then also understanding your fear and fear is can stop us from being able to move forward. And grief can look like fear. So we understand it, we name it and we face it. And it's just like as a child, you're laying in your bed and you fear that there's a monster under your bed, right? Then you cry out to your parents and they come and they look underneath the bed and you know, they've named it and said, no, you know, it's not there, you face it. And then you can go back to sleep. So this is that same sort of thing as taking those fears of fear of what happens. I'm going to forget my loved one. Mm -hmm. That's a huge fear that my, their name is no longer going to be spoken and you know, being able to address that. And, and um, what, what's going to happen if I don't get through this? So there's different types of fears that we just need to be able to deal with, to be able to move forward. Cause we know we don't, get over our journey, we move forward, we do heal, we're scarred, but we move forward and heal. And then the last um, phase, phase three is recovery. And so I really believe that it's so important that we incorporate the four areas of our health, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health. And this encompasses, you know, the physical is our exercise and how we eat and how much water we drink. And, you know, if we're doing yoga, you know, that mm -hmm. physical component, because when we are physically active, it helps to produce endorphins that want us to do more. It helps to clear our thinking, which leads us into the mental and emotional. It's like how we think and how we respond and tell you if in, that, in those components, if you tell yourself that you're never, ever, ever, ever going to get over your loss, guess what? You're never, ever, ever going to get over your loss. But if you tell yourself, yes, I can get through this. I'll always remember my loved one. I can do something in their honor. And just like you spoke about, death is part of life. And we're meant to be able to move forward and being able to accept that. And, and what the stories we tell ourselves. And, you know, we may fear being judged because of, the, of our response, you know, and one of the things that I chose, especially with my son's death, is that I chose to grieve whenever and whenever it happened. If it caught me driving down the street, if it caught me in the grocery store, um, you know, if it caught me while I was working, I chose that because I couldn't stuff those emotions. And then finally, in our spiritual health, 
for me, as I've mentioned, my spirituality, my higher power is, is God. And it's changed, it's improved, and that relationship has helped me. But you have the option. I'm not telling you have to believe in God. You can have that spirituality and that higher power because I think we all have a higher power that we believe in that is in the universe that has some sort of control over us and that helps us to get through tough times. And if you want to call it your higher power, I am just perfectly okay with that because that's you. I talk about prayer. And again, you know, you can pray to your higher power. It doesn't have to be the God of gods that I believe in, um, you know, and even just taking care of simple things like meditation that I include this. And when you start incorporating all of these things, it helps to bring you up. I like the analogy is that we're never over it. You're, you feel like you're going in circles, but actually you're spiraling upward so that you're improving each time you go through this process. And you may bounce back and use one of those tools that like, hey, this helped me, you know, um, when I was talking about the physical health. Oh, you know what? My brain isn't really thinking clearly and I just want to sleep. If I just get up and walk around the block. That's going to help produce endorphins. It's going to help with the brain fog and be able to think. So, you know, and then when we pray, that's just, for me, it's an enlightenment. And when um, that I'm like, oh, I'm realizing I didn't have control over the situation. And that um, for me, it's like, I look forward to seeing my son again. I believe in heaven and I look forward to seeing my son again in a beautiful place. And that gives me hope. And so I, and one of the reasons why I really incorporate this in, in my book is because in traditional psychology and therapy, so many times it's just the mental and emotional components. And coming from a personal training background and physical health, I know how our health, you know, being active can help with grief. It can help with depression. So to incorporate that, and then it couldn't be forgotten because I know what it does for me. And then the spirituality, I know this is a polit politically correct component. And yes, I'm not in some places because I talk about God. You know, there is, um, you know, one uh, reading group that said, nope, you talk about God, we can't do this. Um, but I'm like, well, you know what? I give a choice. But I think that's really important wherever you are, whether it's about God or that higher power, but when you to incorporate all four components and very few people in the grief specialty world mention physical or spiritual. And that's where I'm so different because that makes the difference in people being able to find that life again, regain hope, have some peace, have some joy, be able to move forward. And it, it's just so important. This is, I, I get so passionate about this piece <laughs> because nobody else talks about it. No, it's wildly important, right? Because if you think about the, the mind and the body, there's a bi-directional piece. So what you do for your mind impacts your body. What you do for your body impacts your brain. And it goes both directions. A lot of times we'll feel physical sensations in our body that's telling us that we have a, something unmet in our brain or mind. And, and goes both ways, right? So understanding that both of those things are impacted by both of the things that you do is very, very important. And then it, it feeds into that emotional uh, health, which is kind of like being able to understand that there's a stimulus and then there's a response. And that gap in there is your emotion and you have the ability to control that response through being able to use some of these practices of being able to utilize our breath, slowing down, having a meditation, right? And the spiritual practice, um, I think is really beautiful because it allows us to have faith in something that's beyond ourselves because we will get put in situations that we don't think we can overcome. But if we have this fundamental belief, this optimism or this faith, whatever you want, whatever word you want to use it, you can get outside of yourself and believe that something or someone is helping you, driving you. There's something to believe in. There's something to move forward towards. So all of these pieces clearly are intertwined. It's really our 
our fundamentals, our foundation as a human being. And we're just building our foundation as we would build a really tall skyscraper. We start by digging really deep, right? We're doing the same thing with ourselves. We're doing a bit of excavation. We're digging deep. We're finding out our foundation and we're building from there, especially after we've been hit with hard grief, hard loss, um, things that we, we don't think we know we could overcome, but we kind of take those steps anyways and then feel like, oh, I can do this. I can, I am capable of this. As you say, right, you can still live a productive and fulfilling life. It's very possible. It's a hundred percent possible. You just have to be able to take these steps that you're talking about in a very diligent, persistent, patient way. And it starts to stack up over time. Then you're like, oh, I'm feeling a little bit better. I'm feeling a little bit better. Um, And so, but that fear piece also that you talked about, I felt that a lot. Like I, I felt like if I wasn't thinking about my sister all day, every day, that she was just going to magically disappear from my brain, my body, all the pictures were going to magically be deleted uh, or taken away from the album that I made. And I, and that was like very hard um, for the first bit. And then having a day where I didn't think about her, I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Why aren't you, why aren't you thinking about her? Like Mm -hmm. she, She's your sister. She's gone. Why are you thinking about her? What the fuck is wrong with you? You don't care. You don't love her. And then you start to learn these things, right? You hit yourself with a lot of guilt and a lot of shame, but then you start to kind of learn. You start to live. You start to oh, find happiness again and find joy again and realize that's exactly what your loved one always wanted for you forever and always. And they still want that for you now, but it's really hard. You just have to keep kind of going. I know that sounds very cliche, but that's the only way to uncover any of these things about yourself that are truly remarkable. And so I wanted to say all that in relation to those those three phases that you talk about in your book, which are life-changing, life-changing and life-saving. Like what you're talking about is no small thing. It's, it's incredibly powerful. Thank you. Thank you. So that's amazing. I mean, amazing. It's just like, yeah, it just really rings true with me. And I hope I imagine when other people read the book, uh, they're going to feel the same way and they're going to feel like, like, like someone has their back. Like, that's really important. Like you as the author are basically saying, you're like wrapping a warm blanket around them and saying, I got your back. Like my words and my journey and my experience are going to help you get through this because I got through it and I believe that you can too. And people will feel the warmness of it and feel like they're all cuddled up uh, with a nice cup of tea or coffee or whatever they drink and it's a beautiful smelling candle and be like, yeah, Peggy's got me. She's got me. I can do this. And that's really, really cool to be able to put that into words from an experience that you've had or multiple experiences that you've had. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And I, and I hope that people feel that. And I love your analogy wrapped in a warm blanket and then I've got their back. So that's, the, uh, I'm going to use that. You should absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, but I know we're running up, we're running short on time here because you got a bunch of of stuff that you have to do to promote your uh, new awesome book. But everyone should go to Peggy's website, um, thegriefspecialist.com. Beautiful website, newly renovated. Um, you can get the book right there. You can sign up for her newsletter. Um, there's coaching stuff available. All of that, uh, and. So thank you, Peggy, for joining me. I really appreciate it. This was a great second episode. We'll have you on for a third episode and a fourth episode as long as you uh, keep continuing to do great work and and our relationship stays really, really cool and fruitful. And I'm, I'm glad to be friends with you. So yeah, and thank you. Thank you for everything that you're doing, your involvement with youth. And and I think that's super important for kids, for them to have that positive role model. Thank you for doing this podcast. Thank you for having me on. I'm just so very grateful. And um, just, I want to share with your audience that if this has been useful to you in what we've spoken about, please share it with others that need it. Mm -hmm. Because Aaron, he has just has the heart himself as he talks about his journey. And as we're going through Suicide Awareness Month and sharing that. So please just remember it's something suicides on the rise there's somebody i know you know that could use this absolutely 100 share it with a friend um and 
most importantly, most importantly, take take good care of yourselves, take good care of others. Um, you are deeply loved and cared for, and you're very capable. And I believe in you. And thank you for joining us, Aggie. Thank you, and everyone. Cheers. We'll see you next time.